The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Food and Drug Administration have just released alarming data that underscores the risks posed by illegal disposable vapes marketed to kids. Well, joining us with her fight for our youth's health is former South Southern California Congresswoman Mary Bono. It's great to have you with us. Thanks for having me. So, so you're chairwoman of Communities United for Smart Policy, and in ensconced in this position, what are you aiming to achieve? Well, a lot, <laughs> but in this case, what we're talking about is uh, illegal disposable vape products that are harming our kids, that we have millions of them that have been imported into the U.S., and they're dangerous, harmful products sitting on store shelves. And I think all too often people think these are safe alternatives to smoking cigarettes, and they're not. So we want the FDA to do their job and get these off the store shelves. Yeah, and, and where has the FDA been failing? Why aren't they the ones taking the first steps to make sure that they're cracking down on these devices? Well, look, the FDA admitted there's a problem, which is the good news. The bad news is they're not doing enough to get these off of store shelves quickly. Um, so again, they issued a, a red alert, which allows the Customs and Border Protection to get to interdict these at the borders to stop them from coming in in the first place. But again, the FDA, we need a lot more than just a letter writing campaign or, or a couple of press releases. We actually need them to do their jobs and, and make these illegal products go away. Yeah, before we get into sort of the, the dollar amount that this is a, a boon for a lot of people who sell these devices, these products, but can we first talk about the new data and who is being affected most by their, their exposure to these vapes? Well, look, if you look at the fact that in since 2019 alone, there's been a 2,000% increase mm. in the number of high school students who are using these products. I mean, 2,000% increase is huge. I mean, it's alarming. So, and look, I do recognize that there are people who have bought these, you know, these retailers who are trying to sell these products and they don't know that they're harmful, but so they need clarity. They need these, you know, the, the resellers, the retailers, the convenience stores, need clarity um, from the FDA that these products are A, illegal, and B, very harmful for the people that are buying them. Look, specifically kids. You know, it's not only high school students, this 2,000% increase, but oftentimes there will be, a, a, you know, vape cartridge and a very delicious, you know, child and taste, <clears throat> excuse me, child enticing flavor yeah. that a five-year-old picks up on. And that five-year-old gets very sick from it. Right. So it's not a harmless alternative. Yeah, it, well, is, it is dangerous. When we're talking about flavors that are geared towards kids, we're talking about things like uh, cotton candy and, and things like that. So not necessarily something, I mean, some adults I'm sure get attracted to that too, but that's definitely enticing for a young child. And we're hearing some as young as five years old being sent to the ER. That's right. And you know, you, you brought it up, cotton candy, mango, you name it, all sorts of delicious flavors. I think the last count I saw was 9,000 unique flavors. So something for everybody to get hooked on here. Um, you know, but then these the manufacturers from China are using, <clears throat> excuse me, influencer campaigns like TikTok, yeah. um, again, to promote these to our kids. And then they're putting cute little cartoon characters on the packaging. So I think even to some degree, parents might not know that these are harmful products because look, they look innocuous and it's always oh, just water vapor. Right. That's what I was told at one point, that it's just water vapor. No, it's not. No. And there's elevated nicotine. And this is what's scary is you are now seeing examples of cases of fentanyl that are actually in these either products and that is very very terrifying so this goes beyond chemicals this goes beyond nicotine we're talking about fentanyl and that's deadly so what is next now what what is the next step because this is a multi-million dollar industry uh, what is next to really crack down on these devices on this product and to get them off of store shelves well look it is a multi-million dollar industry but it's illegal so let's see some law enforcement. Let's go after these products and get them off the shelves. If they're, it's illegal to sell them, you know, but again, we need clarity for, for store owners so that they would recognize these are not harmless products and that they are illegal. I have some sympathy towards them because I, you know, there's a loophole. There was a time when they could sell them. Yeah. And I think the FDA was at the wheel when they needed to let store owners that the law changed and that they therefore became illegal and they should no longer buy them to be sold. And with just about a few seconds left, if you can just uh, give a word to the parents out there. Well, look, parents, it's tough enough. I'm a parent, but I'm also now a grandparent of preteens, and these, these sorts of threats really concern me. They'll be exposed to these vape products if yeah. they haven't already been. But definitely in school, when my, my grandson goes to, to middle school, 
Um, and that concerns me. So um, I want to encourage parents to go to our website, www.uniteforsmartpolicy.org, to learn more about the facts on these illegal, illegal disposable vapes. Uh, and you can find more information at the FDA website as well on the harmful effects of these illegal disposable vape products. Congresswoman Mary Bono, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We're back after this.